awful news. Just, just awful news. Oh, hello there. I was just catching up on my Twitter feed. You know, I saw a very interesting post the other day. People were talking about this clip from YouTuber Mindless Entertainment. This person, this, this fucking bitch, running around being like, I am the face of female empowerment, and yet she can't you know, even handle criticism! She is not capable of, ex of dealing with the criticism that her peers deal with on a regular basis. She's the strongest person in the whole MCU, but she can't deal with the criticism that people are levying on her. And people were asking, how could somebody have this much animosity, this just level of hatred for an actor, for someone they don't even know? And I thought, that is a good question. Especially seeing as she has such a level of hatred that she's created 19 videos about how much she hates Brie Larson in a single month. Could this person really have this much hatred? This just pure vitriolic anger to one person? Or could there be another motivation for making all these videos? Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, I'll press that like button. There's a video popping up in the corner. Get involved with me. That's got links for my Patreon, my Teespring. I got Fifi's t-shirts. They're awesome. You should get one. Uh, social media links, business address, uh, different ways to get in contact with me. So if you like this channel, you want to see it grow, click on that video. Find different ways to engage with this channel. Share this video. Comment on this video. Right, have a concept they call virtue signaling. Now, virtue signaling is a very simple concept. For you see, much as the noble peacock uses a display of his beautiful plumage to attract a virile pea hen, so the soy boy beta cock uses a display of his feminist allyship to attract a virile SJW feminazi. Now, over on the left, we have a very similar concept called performative wokeness. But the difference is that instead of being about men pretending to be socially progressive to get women to open their legs, it is about corporations pretending to be socially progressive to get everyone in the world to open their wallets. Now the gold standard of this behavior is Dove. You see, Dove, for many years now, has had a real beauty campaign where they eschew using you know, traditionally beautiful models in favor of real women with real body types. Why did Dove ask six women with curvy thighs, rounder hips, and pear-shaped bums to try their new firming range? Well, firming the skin of size 8 supermodels wouldn't have been much of a challenge, would it? New Dove firming, as tested on real curves. The thing about Dove is they're owned by the Unilever Corporation, and Unilever also own Lynx. And Lynx, for many years, have had a campaign of running well, these ads. So you see, Unilever is, on the one hand, handing out this message of Beautiful, oh, we're all social progressive women, respect, body positivity, the natural beauty of the woman. But on the other hand, no, the only woman worth having is a tits out bikini model, and that's all any man's gonna want. How do Unilever, how do they do this? How do they resolve this hypocrisy? It's because they don't believe in either message. They don't give a shit about either of these messages. They will say whatever they need to to get your sweet moolah. Now, just as matter is paired with antimatter and ducks are paired with negaducks, so is performative wokeness paired with performative anti wokeness. Now, we're lucky, I guess, to live in a time where it's more financially lucrative to pretend to be woke than it is to pretend to be anti woke. So you don't see a lot of corporations going with the per performative anti wokeness model. So that leaves this economic niche to be filled by the absolute bottom of the economic hierarchy. The YouTuber! So let's talk about Ethan Van Scriver. Now, Ethan 
is a comics artist who used to be primarily known for his work on Green Lantern, where he excelled at drawing frowns, grimaces, and angry yelling. No word on if Ethan ever managed to master the art of the beautiful smile. Don't worry, Ethan. You've only been doing this for 20 years. You'll figure out how to draw a happy smile one of these days. Now, Ethan was a chap who was not adverse to, shall we say, sharing the odd alt-right meme. And this continued behavior eventually isolated him from the wider comics community. And once isolated from the community, he decided to go full force on embracing Comicsgate. What's Comicsgate, you ask? Well, remember Gamergate? It's just like that, except instead of being mad that women exist and Anita Sarkeesian is going to make all the female video game characters not sexy anymore, it's about being mad that women exist and that Erica Henderson isn't drawing Squirrel Girl sexy enough anymore. If I can't jerk off the Squirrel Girl, why do we even have this medium for? These days, Ethan has turned his back on working for the main two comics publishers and has decided to embark on a bold new direction via his career, running a YouTube channel called Comics Pro Art Secrets. Now, if you're a fool like me, you might assume that a channel called Comics Pro Art Secrets would be filled with art tutorials, advice from this 20-year veteran of the medium on how to succeed, get into the medium, build those connections. But no, it seems to mostly just be long rants about SJWs and how they're ruining everything. Now the reason I bring up Ethan Van Scriver is that he is the perfect encapsulation of the performative anti-wokeness cottage industry. Let's take this video for example. Virtue signal virtuosos number one top virtual signals of the day something virtue virtue I forgot got it's a bit of bullshit I forgot the exact name. A video where Ethan spends 10 minutes complaining about two Two tweets that he saw on the internet that day. Now before you can get to this content, first you have to sit through a call to subscribe to his channel and a call to support his bad project on Indiegogo. And then after the 10 minutes of content, there's a call to subscribe to his Twitter, a call to buy his mediocre t-shirts to that tie into his Indiegogo project, and then a second call to back his project on Indiegogo. I want to point out that when I watched the video, during the second call to back the Indiegogo project, there was a monetized ad. This was one of three monetized ads on this one video. So about that Indiegogo project, you see, back in the 90s, Ethan created a little comic called Cyberfrog, which is about a... Cyber... Frog? I don't know, I haven't read it. My local store doesn't exactly have thousands of copies bursting the shelves, and they ain't got that shit up on Comixology. Either way, the point is, a couple years back, Ethan decided he wanted to bring back Cyberfrog. Because we were all just dying to find out what happened to the Cyberfrog from the back of Ethan's high school math book. But Ethan was either unwilling, or, I'm gonna guess, unable to find the traditional publisher that would support bringing back this beloved comic icon. So Ethan did what a lot of creators do when they have a project they want to bring to life. He turned to crowdfunding. And that brings me back to my original point. You see, it's no coincidence that Ethan launched this little comics project of his after fully embracing Comicsgate to his bosom. You see, a common thing that unites Comicsgate with all of the right is the perception that financial success equates to moral superiority. And if you want to prove that something is morally superior, you do that by throwing buckets of money at it. You know what they say. Vote with your dollars! So the right will spend money on something, not simply because it's a product they want, but because it's an ideology they want to support. They want to win the battle of the ideology. They want to own those libs. And this is where the canny opportunists can stake a claim. You see, Ethan has very solidly positioned himself as being against everything those filthy SJW libtards stand for. So if we back Ethan financially, we show that he's right. He's showing that we're right. And that's why these people are spending, on average, $60 for a 48-page comic. If you're not familiar with comics, a 48-page comic should cost you about $10. Even now, if you criticize Ethan's project or his behavior in any way, his fans will rush to his defense by pointing out that 
Cyberfrog is the most financially successful comics crowdfunding project of all time. Side note, no it isn't. Even though Ethan raised a lot of money for this project, mostly because he ran three separate crowdfunding campaigns with one comic, he still raised less money than Rich Burley did to reprint his Order of the Stick comics. Order of the Stick Rules The Virtue Signaling Virtuoso video is of particular interest to me because in this video, Ethan literally explains to his audience what he is doing. So what is a virtue signal? Well, it's when an SJW, a social justice warrior, tweets out something unnecessarily extremist in nature, letting the other uh, SJWs in their pack know uh, that they are one of them. And it's always very ostentatious, it's always over the top, it's always very conspicuous, and it always makes me laugh. These are sad attempts to feel at one with the group. It's as if to say, well, I'm not a Republican, okay, I I'm not... I'm not a conservative. I, I ain't alt-right. Simply replace Republican here with liberal, and he's spelling out his business plan to all his viewers. And they don't even notice. They just eat that shit up. He's telling them how, he's pro how he is tricking them, how he's signaling virtuously to his audience his virtue of hating those libs, and they're throwing buckets of money at him. I know when you're in high school or, you know, uni and you have the assignment and one of the key skills is critical thinking and you roll your eyes because that's what every assignment tells you. You're going to learn those critical thinking, critical analysis skills, but you actually have to pay attention in your humanities classes. This is important. You need, these are real skills. You need to be able to spot when a grifter, a grifter, is using your political ideology to milk your money. Now, there's nothing wrong with crowdfunding per se, or having a Patreon. I myself have one. Link in the description. And God knows we all need some sort of side hustle in this horrible capitalist wasteland we're all forced to live our lives in. But when you support someone, one of their projects, or back them on Patreon, you should be doing it because you want to back them. You want to support the content they are making, the things they are creating because you believe in them. You enjoy their videos, their, the music they make, the books they write, their autobiographical webcomics. You shouldn't be supporting someone just because they are some sort of pawn in your ideological war. And you certainly shouldn't be supporting someone because they claim to be against something that you are also against. This is a vital lesson for everyone to learn. The left, the right, all of us. Because if you can't spot when a grifter is exploiting your beliefs and ideologies to line his own pockets, how are you going to spot when an even bigger grifter is exploiting your beliefs and ideologies to take control of your country?